iridescent powders. In today's tutorial, we'll be covering the process of using iridescent powders with casting resin. These can also be used with some of our casting rubber products. And you might have seen some of our posts about this on our Instagram page. If you haven't followed us already, we're at Biddy Mold Supply on Instagram. And the way this works is we're going to brush the iridescent powder into the mold. Now these powders can also be mixed into some casting products as well, but here we're using the black iridescent powder to get a kind of a gunmetal finish on our finished cast part. And this is a 7325 mold. This is Platt Sill 7325, which is kind of a medium softness rubber. This is about as, as uh, hard of a rubber as I'll use for this process because you'll find with with uh, powders like this, when you're brushing a powder into the surface of a silicone mold, it works best with a soft silicone. So once I brush that in, I'm going to use some compressed air to blow out the excess, and now it's ready for casting. So the way this works is we've basically created a very thin film of iridescent powder on the surface of the silicone. And it's just that surface tension of the silicone just grabs that powder and holds it in place until the resin bonds to it. And here we're using some Easy Flow 60 that we're going to pigment with some black uh, polycolor pigment. And we're going to pour that in behind it. And the way this this uh, works is Easy Flow resins and a lot of other resins in that same chemical family are very adhesive. So we don't have to worry at all about those wanting to bond to whatever is in the mold that's not silicone. So by brushing in that thin veneer of iridescent powder and then pouring the resin behind it, what happens is that resin will bond to the iridescent powder and that gets a very nice permanent bond on any powder it touches and then pulls that out of the mold with the cast part. And then you can do additional finishing work from there, but uh, that's a great way to get a built-in finish in the cast part that's part of the part because it's actually bonded to the surface. So you can add additional paints and finishes over that, but now you have some foundation there that's actually part of the surface of the resin. So real important there, you're basically using that adhesive property of the resin to uh, build that iridescent finish into the surface. Now with uh, Easy Flow 60, when it starts to cure, it's going to turn opaque. And even with a lot of black pigment, you'll typically see it turn more of a gray color when it reacts and goes off. Now this is by no means a comprehensive resin casting video. I'm going to put a link up in the upper left hand corner there if you want to check out our uh, tutorial explaining just the basic use of Easy Flow resin. So be sure to check that out if you're new to this process. And now ready to demold our cast part. And here you see I'm just popping those little corner bolts loose. And in the early stages, a lot of times when you're casting with the Easy Flow series, you'll find those parts are a little bit green and have a little bit of give to them. So you want to be careful with a part like this, uh, any part with a straight edge, make sure if you're demolding it early, make sure you set that on a level surface for it to cure completely. Now the nice thing with the Easy Flow 60 is it cures to a 65D, so it has really high impact resistance. We don't have to worry about that shattering if it's dropped. And now we're going to use some of the bronze iridescent powder. And this is great for bronze effects. Uh, there's also a silver and a gold and a copper iridescent powder, also part of that series. So there's a lot of different metallic finishes that can be used. And again, this is great for weapon props. If you're any kind of uh, uh, weapon like a, a gun or anything with blued steel can easily be simulated with that black iridescent powder. And you can also couple that with the Sculpt Nouveau Silver B Metal Coating to dry brush a light little bit of uh, silver over the top to give that illusion of scuffed metal. And those two products pair very nicely to get some very realistic metallic finishes. Now once we've brushed that in, again same rules apply, we're going to blow out the excess and now ready to cast our resin behind that. Now in this case I'm going to use some of the Easy Flow Black. Now this is a new resin product that's pre-pigmented black and a lot of our customers requested this formula for uh, casting prop weapons and armor and things that are going to be just a flat black and then they're just going to dry brush other colors over the top. So this is a great resin to pour behind a metallic finish like this. So having that black background if uh, for for any reason we have a an area where you can see through that iridescent powder, you don't have to worry about it because you have that nice uh, flat black resin.
And just to make sure there's no air bubbles, we're going to spray a light spray across the back with some 2500. And again, about 10 minutes later, we're ready to demold our part. And like before, uh, with the Easy Flow 60, the Easy Flow Black uh, does go through a little longer green stage here where it does uh, have a little bit of flexibility to it. So make sure when you demold that part, make sure you set that on a level surface so that it doesn't warp. And there we have our bronze effect. Now, if we wanted, we could finish that out with some of the Sculpt Nouveau waxes to add an additional character to that. And last but not least, we also have a full selection of uh, colored iridescent powders, not just metallics like blue and orange and red. So you can check those out as well. I'll put a link to the page with the iridescent powders in the video description. So be sure to check that out. And in this case, I decided to use a more of the Easy Flow Black to back this up. But if you wanted, you could back this up with just regular Easy Flow, just with no pigment added, and that white would make it a much brighter blue. So there's a lot of different things you can do with this, experimenting with different powder finishes, and then backing it up with different colors of resin as a background color. So now, as soon as we've blown out any excess, we're ready to cast our resin behind the part. And you'll notice we're using no mold release. And that's important here because anytime we use mold release in the casting process, we will have to clean that off later if we're going to be painting. So make sure if you're going to be doing any kind of painting, make sure you either use no mold release or you make sure you use a mold release that you can later easily clean off the part. And there we have our finished cast piece. And this time, of course, we have a dark iridescent blue. And you can really see that iridescent effect there in the light when it's tilted just right. Uh, again, this is great for cosplay emblems and armor and all kinds of prop making applications like this. And of course, you can find all the iridescent powders on our website at brickintheyard.com. And of course, uh, you'll see on the left-hand side, if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And on the right-hand side, you'll see uh, one of our tutorials there about Easy Flow casting resin. So if you're new to that product line, you want to understand some basic uh, casting resin tips, be sure to click on that video.